two people. I make notes that we switch and I work at my phone. <laughs> Y'all, fucking coronavirus. Drink. Oh, there's only like eight people on it. Well, Y'all bear with us, technical difficulties. I do have some good shit to say tonight, though, so stay with us. To put a, a good way to put a commercial in on, on, on. Yeah, eight people. Can I come inside? No. Okay, come on. Come on, Judge. Okay. Hey everybody, y'all hold on just a second. Technical difficulties. All right. Sorry, we had it up to 170 some people, and now we're down to 41. We love y'all and appreciate you. Got some good stuff to say uh, and talk about, and then I want to share some information about Blunt's case, and then we'll take your questions. And that's it. So I know. So, Lori Goolsby, can you see me? Says Lori Goolsby joining. Hey, Terry, Connor, Ashley Carradine, another. Hey, Christine Hernandez. Okay, I found this on the web for how do I secure then another. What a shit chat. Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. Could you please repeat it? All right, so everybody, we're, we're going to do this again. I apologize. We hardwired, or Cindy hardwired the computer now. Uh, through, what's it called? Uh, uh, you, what's that called? That, that Ethernet. Right? Ethernet. Ethernet. So we'll try this out, get it back up. The Again, the rules for tonight, if you hear the words coronavirus, you have to drink. I don't give a shit if you're drinking tap water. Drink. All right. Uh, again, Woody Overton, your host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Let's see where they can see me. It's a picture's mess. <laughs> this is fucking comical. How are you going to do it, Sam? You want to? The metal. I don't have no idea. It's like it moves with it. Anyway. This is funny, right? Oh, fuck it. I don't care. We're going to roll with it. There you go. There you go. On the other side. All right. So anyway, y'all. Real life, real crime. You know, we're all in a scripted. Obviously, not professional production. Uh, uh, thank you for being here. Tonight's keyword is coronavirus. If you hear coronavirus, you have to drink. And we'll do it again. Um, give it a second. Let some people get back on. I was talking about y'all, the canceled shows. We're going to come back bigger and better and stronger. The We might be able to do something special in the meantime uh, with some of our friends. It's like uh, uh, Toby and Shelly Tom play went live from uh, it's Point, Point Marie the other night, right? And, and they just got to play some acoustic music, et cetera. Y'all... If these entertainers come on, uh, Chase Tyler's got one coming on, I think, Tuesday night, Chase Tyler Band. They come on and they have a tip jar or something. If you can do, if you can afford to, throw them a little something their way. The, um, it's important. They got no work, right? The, I mean, I obviously have other stuff going on besides this, but they, they don't. And, and it's important. Everybody's hurting, but we'll get through it. And we'll come back stronger than ever. So, the, um, if everybody can hear me, yes, throw me a sign. 
So again, Jim Raffin, obviously not here. He's home taking care of his family and working on Barbara Blunt's case diligently. We just dropped Barbara's latest episode. The uh, trying to get the logo straight so y'all can see it. And we interviewed her son, Ricky, on this one, y'all. Let me tell you something. This is a shit hot case. This is what I love working a cold case, and Jim loves working a cold case. The I know people love to hear the old cop stories, and we're going to do that. This is the last week of Barbara Blunt you'll hear for at least two weeks, and we're going back telling I got a great set of stories that actually tie into one another, and, and you would never believe it how it ends up, right? So, y'all, if you just hang in there, and that's entertainment. The old story is entertainment. Barbara Blunt's not entertainment. It's a homicide case, y'all. Murder. Your mama, whether she's dead or alive, or your grandmother, whatever. Imagine somebody coming to her house and tricking her out, luring her out, and then killing her, and you never see her again. What's even worse than that is you don't know her body is. Okay, this is a case that we can bring home. We are working in conjunction with Sheriff R, Jason R, the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. Total different than the shit show in Rapides Parish uh, on Courtney Coco's case. The they want it solved, and they have more active detectives working the case than uh, they did back in the day when Jim and I were. Uh, detectives for Livingston. So Jason Ard, shout out to him straight up. The detectives that are working the case, shout out to him. It's huge. And y'all, the technology they have now, it wouldn't even been fair for the criminals if we had that technology back in the day. And I'm not going to tell you what it is because it shocked the shit out of me when I found out what some of it was. Um, but it's a shit hot case. And Bad guys or bad girls or whoever you are, and you know who you are, and you're probably watching right now. I guarantee I would be if I would if I was the one who murdered Miss Barbara and took her body off wherever. I would want all the information I could have. Right? We're coming for you, and Jim and I don't have to follow law enforcement rules. So, <laughs> yeah, you're fucked. And and pardon my friends, but you're fucked. The so on well, Courtney's case. A little different scenario. We didn't have all the help that we have now on this one. We got the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office and a great group of professionals. Um, and they want it solved. And I said this before, and I'll say it again. I got a text at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, I think it's week before last. And who it was from? Sheriff Ard. And he's sending me a copy of, of the document he found in the file himself. Uh, um, what other sheriff does that? He wants the case solved, and we're going to solve it. And, and his guys are great. But I don't have a tip number. That's where I need Jim Raffin for. But, 395-1302. So it's 225-395-1302. Y'all call it. If you, you could put your, if I could put your head inside my brain, and, and you could see every time y'all share the episode, but, uh, to other people, we get tips. I mean, I, I, it's like instant. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I, I get off here tonight. We're going to have Jim and I are going to have many more tips that are going to be in because we're doing this. this is one of the reasons, one of the only reasons we're doing uh, this episode, to, this episode, this live tonight. It's not just because everybody's bored and coronavirus drink. That's they the rule. Saying, they keep wanting you to say mm -hmm. it. <laughs> All right, coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. Say that three times fast. <laughs> All right, so Barbara Blunt, got to bring it home, people. We can do this. Woo, I wish I could tell you. I wish I could tell you what's going on in the case. Uh, I can't, but your your tips, your sharing, it's absolutely paramount. Every time you do it, we get new good stuff in. Those of you who've tipped and sent your information, thank you so much. You know who you are. If we haven't spoken to you personally or I've responded at least to you personally, it's important. It's important to this family, but it's important for justice. Justice for Courtney Coco, but justice for Barbara Blunt also, okay? And we can bring it home together. And then everything will be well, right? And hopefully it'll happen long before. Well, no, I can't say that. 
I guess what I want the coronavirus solved for Barbara Blunt's case. Um, with that being said, the I was talking about uh, Toby Tom play and them and or all your performers. It, they're going to start doing lives. I think I saw Garth Brooks was going to do like an hour show from his house from Trisha Yearwood, uh, uh, just to give people some entertainment. Those people out of work. I mean, Garth, Garth Brooks ain't got to worry about shit, right? <laughs> but the rest of them that hustle every day, y'all, you know, try to support where you can. Your local business, restaurants, and everything. I mean, the one thing about the coronavirus is. I told, I told Cindy today, I said, we're saving a shitload of money because we're not out in, in a restaurant drinking. Uh, uh, but we're locked up in the swamp, and it is what it is. So prayers to everybody across the world. And and just do what they say you're supposed to do, y'all, and hopefully get out in front of this thing. So that being said, oh, tomorrow night, 5.30, uh, Tom Play, or Real Life Real Crime, producer and the, the people that wrote the music etc they're going live from point marie look log into it on facebook listen to it y'all know uh day before yesterday was the first time i got to see tom play live even though it's on facebook it, it, when they came into the back uh the crew bash jim and i were upstairs taking pictures and signing autographs the whole night now my wife they, I said, <laughs> I'm sure y'all seen some of the videos. She was on the stage. I, she made up for my loss. And people were coming up and said, uh, do you know what your wife's doing? I said, is she dancing on a speaker? And they said, no. I said, well, then we're good. I didn't know she was on stage rocking it out. And the whole stage is a speaker. Uh, okay, whatever. The, the, That's what Debbie told me. The, the, uh, anyways, let's do a couple questions and break it up. Okay, so the bet that Heather. Love y'all. Heather's been um, consistent. Heather Kaz? Mm -hmm. so, Hey, Heather, we love you. Thank been, you for your support. You're very persistent. She wants to hear more about the stories from Jesus Help Me. Ooh, Jesus. Um, you know, that's a tough one, Heather. Um, Jesus Help Me is what happened to me. It's my true account. I guess I was telling stories long before Real Life, Real Crime. The, uh, I died on the table in 2009, on the table in the emergency room in 2009. And I always wondered if... Uh, my high risk victims, people that died violent deaths or uh, lived high risk lifestyles, whether it be prostitutes or drug dealers or whatever. Whenever I worked their homicides, I always wondered if the last second and the last breath that they called on Jesus would he come to them, even maybe if they didn't know him, right? Well, I can tell you what, he came from me and I don't. I don't care what religion you are, what deity you believe in, whatever. I'm just telling you what happened for Woody Overton, okay? It was a very real deal. And it took me a couple of years to write that book. Uh, Murray Landry, uh, who was a retired trooper, used to guard Governor Everett's back in the day. He was my partner at the Louisiana State Police as a criminal investigator. And when I came through it, uh, he helped me get through it. But the long and short of it is, he kept saying, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. And because all these hard ass old timers would come in, uh, he'd send them. In. I had my own big private office in the corner deal and say place, but he'd send them in, shut the door. And I t he, he said, just tell them a story. And Murray would leave. I tell him a story. These guys break down crying like babies. Every, for every one of them, it meant something different. And, and Murray kept saying, you got to write it. You got to write it. I was like, mm, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm not really all about the public line of life, where the hell you want to call it. The, uh, and obviously, I'm the biggest sinner. I, I guarantee you I'm the biggest sinner on this island. So I'm not trying to preach to anybody. But I'm going to tell you something. Jesus is real, but hell is real. The devil is real. So, but what Heather's saying is like the stories that you refer to, like the like you've done a podcast on the one with the injection, the cage injector. You have a few, few other stories. She wants to know more about those stories that you speak of in the book. You see what I'm saying? When you go back and you... Uh, the only thing I spoke of in the book was like Russell Kiger right. and, and, and stuff like that. So I don't know how to answer that. Okay. So, all right. Love you, Heather. Thank you. Heather, be more specific if you... Hey, Yolanda Reason. Hey, Jess Alvarado. Hey, Melissa. 
So they're coming up with shorter ways for you to say coronavirus, like COVID or just 19. <laughs> so you know, y'all want to just call it corona? All right. I would never do it. My buddy Ron Haley, probably the top defense attorney in the, uh, one of the top defense attorneys in, in South Louisiana, he, uh, he messaged me last night about looking at a shooting case that they had. And he, he called it the, he said, this Rona is a bitch. So we'll say Rona. Kim Gray, everybody listening. If you hear Rona for the rest of the night, then boom, there you have it. You have to drink. All right. Question. So people are just talking about the book and it's available on Audible and, you know. Yeah, I narrated the book years after it was published. We have Overton published and I published another book that I wrote, um, published a couple of books that we dealt with, et cetera. And that's Overton Publishing. I'm not trying to sell it. If you want to find the book, all you got to do is Google Woody Overton and it'll, it'll pop up. All right. So or it's on, the, or on our website. Jared Bass says, hey, Miss Cindy, will you ask Woody what his process is for a case on the podcast? Does he have the notes or a case file? Is he reciting them from memory? Jared Bass, am I reciting from memory, case notes, et cetera? Well, you know what? Where uh, I don't. The only thing I ever look up on some of the murder cases is the, uh, the appeals process because Shocks the shit out of me. I read after all these years and, and they go through and I, I find out. Uh, obviously, y'all saw we had to do the Mercedes Benz retraction. That was a fuck up. The, the, we got the dealership wrong, not because we did anything malicious towards Mercedes Benz. I think we mentioned them two or three times in the whole episode, but they sent us a, a, a letter, rightfully so. I'd be pissed off if I was into because the life was sort of melting the phone line trying to figure out who the hell this chick was. I was banging this kid with, with, with the mom and dad in the room, right? But, um, so I don't I don't use notes, and I guess that's a fault. That that's a problem. Obviously, it was a problem for the mistake. Or uh, I think the episode is called Family Matters. Obviously, it was a problem for that. Apologize. I don't always get it right. I'm a human being, um, but I'm not ever going to go to reading scripts and shit. I'm just not going to do that. This. Toby wants to know if you and Jim are going to have any lives available for people to see during. Oh, you know what? Thank you, Toby. Tom play y'all. Uh, we actually just put the Walker live show, which we, we did three nights sold out in a row from the Livingston Parish Literacy and Technology Center. The, um, it's a, it's a big deal. It, it was an accident. They asked us, you know, did we want to do it? We did it for one night. It sold out like in an hour. So we added another night, sold out in an hour. And this was like when, during the LSU Nas uh, not National Championship, but the SEC, SEC Championship, mm -hmm. et cetera. Uh, so we added Thursday night, and it sold out. So uh, Livingston Parish Literacy and Technology Center, and it's Kelly Jennings and um, it's Kim Alvin and, and um, Crystal, Hart Crystal Hardison in Southeastern Louisiana University actually came and recorded it and they did our audio and video and so we were saving that show y'all because it's a really good crowd interactive show you if you watch it be prepared to be involved it's called making murder real again and we i mean it's a priceless case and and we were going to take that on the road but guess what rona ruined that shit So we released it. Uh, it's twenty five bucks. And the, the if you're a Patreon member, vandalism tier or up, it's only fifteen bucks. So I mean, it kind of helps if you if you join Patreon. You, you know, you save that you're ten bucks anyway. Um, great show, interactive show. It's a, it's a homicide case. It's got sex, drugs, uh, violent murder. I mean, like make murder real again in. It's just it's good shit. All you fans that came to Walker and saw us, we appreciate that. Love you very much. Um, Vimeo dot com. V i m e o. V i m e o. dot com. dot com. Forward slash. Forward slash. Forward slash, slash whichever. Slash. Um, on demand. On demand. Slash go, R L R C. Slash R L R C. Y'all go to our pages and check it out. I'm not about reading out shit like that. The uh, we've posted it, 
Yes, my wife did a little a teaser post of, of me reading the warning. You'll get to see us in front of the crowd. I promise you this. Everybody that came that show, nobody complained. It wasn't like the basin where it was loud and there was alcohol and everything going on. Actually, it's a really clean cut show for a homicide. I, didn't, I don't think I cursed maybe once or twice. Maybe I said tossing salads. Yeah, yeah I don't know what that is. Go look it up. <laughs> the prison turn tossing salads. So, yeah, but that's for sale. Uh, we did that. Hopefully, you locked up because of Rona. You can enjoy it. It is what it is, y'all. It is a good show. I'm proud of it. I'm, and I know Jim Rathman's proud of it. And I'm, I'm thankful forever. Uh, no matter, I don't, I don't care if we make movies and shit. I don't care how big we get. We will always be faithful to Livingston Parish Literacy and Technology Center. And those ladies we mentioned for giving us our start in the live business. All right, yes. so Christine Hernandez. Hey, Christine, love you. Only, she says she you're the best. It. She's one of the. She actually was the first person to buy the live. Really? Yes, she was. Oh, she's also a dream team member, and she's also our promoter. Before uh, we got the numbers that we have now, we got big like we did. She's the one. Who promoted us cross uh, promoted us with other podcasts etc so christine we love you so much and you've always been our biggest supporter so this is what she says she says i just watched the walker live show fantastic job i would purchase more if and when they are available well we're working on that we're, we're actually we're working on getting the one from the basin and i don't, I don't i'm gonna be nice uh, uh, i won't say anything but when, as soon as we get that i don't know what the audio is gonna be like y'all but everybody that went to the basin is going to get that bitch for free and because of it. it Toby Tom place saved our ass at night. The basin was supposed to have this sound thing and all the televisions, et cetera. But the crowd was packed. I'm, I mean, it was upstairs, downstairs. They were on the staircase and we went out uh, and the audio tanks. If it hadn't been for Toby Tom play, it would have been a total shit show. But the crowd was loud, and there was a Mardi Gras parade before, and everybody's party. Said, "I get that." And and and, but when we get that, we will release it uh, for sale for cheap. Uh, but if you actually were there, you're gonna get it for free. I promise y'all that. We'll, we'll always try to make it right, y'all. Look, we're not we're not audio professionals uh, or video professionals or whatever, yeah, or even live show professionals. We're just laying it out there. But hey, you gonna tell you what? It was a hell of a fucking party. Uh, so <laughs> Rona. <laughs> oh, the bomb deals after dark. If you were there, you you know about that drink. Yeah, we would have given away some toys. Let hey, me give a shout to the bomb deal girls. I haven't uh, um, we haven't communicated much lately, but the bomb deals and promos, right? Bomb deals and promo codes. Mm -hmm. Crazy website. Crazy. Um, yeah, great deals. So Shelly, Tom play. Wants to know what Woody cooked for Cindy tonight. Uh, I stirred some deer meat in a skillet. <laughs> Does that count? Okay. Well, I was defrosting, Shelly. Uh, if you'd have come over, Shelly, uh, um, I, I would have whooped a little something up. But tomorrow, I'm going to be frying backstrap of wow. venison or wild hog. And uh, we're trying to get the fishing boat running, so we'll have some fresh fish real soon. Um, and knuckles and gumbo hey hey how you doing miss Bussard? she wants to make sure that all of her friends that accepted the invitation to watch this get a shout out everybody let me tell you something i pulled up at the hilton downtown baton rouge on friday before uh uh to the ballet park the friday night before the basin show and i'm pulling in and there's a vehicle in front of me and it's got a real life, real crime sticker in the back and I'm like, hell yeah. I mean, they, I mean, made me feel good, right? So I got to meet Gumbo, what do we call it? Knuckles and Gumbo. Knuckles and Gumbo. Got to hang out and have a drink with her. She's an awesome lady. Uh, uh, Y'all that know her, know her. Yolanda Reason, I know you know her. Um, and give huge shout outs to you knuckles and gumbo and everybody that you invited to watch tonight you're an awesome lady and we appreciate you amanda watts um, corona no it's corona rona rona i'm sorry rona 
So Amanda Watts Fletcher wants to know if there's been any talks of a TV show. There has been, and um, a lot of talks, y'all. The especially um, when we won 2019 Podcast of the Year Award, we had had at least five different production companies contact us about a show. Um, when the Morning Advocate article came out again, the we've had people contact et cetera. I really can't say a lot about it because I can't. It, it'd be, um, but you better believe that's something that is probably coming up. We hope. I just don't want to do, Jim and I don't want to do another bullshit show. I, I try to watch them during hunting season. I've talking to all these producers and, and production companies and the guys telling the, the, their own old cases. Lieutenant Joe Kenda, I mean, I understand he's famous and shit, but I don't really get it. The, uh, to me, that's kind of boring. But the uh, the one I do like is Cold Justice, where the lady prosecutor goes out and works with detectives in the field for a week trying to solve these cold cases. I like that. I like that idea. Um, Paul Holes is doing a thing. I like the way they go back and review. So let me tell you something. The, if they want to do something like that, I'm not going to tell you we're working on it or not working on it. But obviously, if you see us on TV, you'll know. Uh, great question. Though. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of, they're just talking amongst themselves, talking about how they need to drink and uh, they need to go refill their drinks. And <laughs> Well, yeah, I'm going to get to the questions that were submitted earlier. You keep going, Cindy. I'm going to look at Dawn. Mernick? No, Mora. Oh, uh, Mora. What? <laughs> what are you doing there, Sergeant? She yeah. kept asking if that was, she said, is that my voice uh, that she heard? And I said, yes. And Jody Allen is watching. Hey, and Jody. Christy, Krista Guy is watching. Let's see. Um, Dan Rona stopping the show. Jared Gray, he's the one that asked the question earlier. Jared. Um, Rona, y'all drink. Let's see. Jenny's saying goodbye. Jenny Wyatt? Yeah. Jenny's another dream team member. We love you, Jenny. Um, Knuckles and Gumbo saying she would love to hear the one from the basement. Yeah, she was there should, front right? row and couldn't hear it. A anything. lot of people. They, hey, Knuckles, I saw uh, some video people took in a crowd and shit. It was loud. It was loud as hell. The, um, I'm trying to see where my post is. Here it is. We got. All right, so I'm gonna read a couple questions. We're seeing read some questions off of here. That was from people that submit their questions early. Uh, again, y'all, we do have the the video for sale from uh, Walker. Just go in our social media. It, it, it's there, right? It's it's entertaining. Uh, no shit, it's a good story. Um, the Barbara Blunt case just dropped it for everybody. The uh, the latest episode, like a couple minutes before we went live, call in your ideas, your tips, your gut feelings, whatever it may be. No, I don't care if we get the same one 157 times. That's great. That's that 158 time that's going to be the one that cracks it wide open. And guess what? We already have directions that we're going in this case. It's no longer, Miss Barbara's case is no longer cold. No, 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 no. It's hot. It's shit hot. And thank you to whatever fan sent me the uh, shit your bed hot sauce. <laughs> from, I think it's from Australia. That's good shit. It's, it's not uneatable. Uh, we have a lot of fans that sent us a lot of great stuff. Kirst, I think, I don't get your name wrong, Kirsten Dahl from Minnesota. Uh, sent us the pickles and some frame stuff and we, the lady I, I, her name we did get your the one of the state of Louisiana with the strings like Jim posted y'all tomorrow we'll do a post on all those things y'all are awesome uh, thank you for all the gifts and presents go ahead so um, do you plan on releasing any of the case file details not shared on the podcast to the Patreon page on the Barbara Blunt what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do on that y'all is is I'm gonna release some personal videos that I took on Barbara Blunt's to patron. Okay. And that's going to show you the home, the, uh, the hunting club road where her vehicle was found, stuff like that. It's not like Courtney Coco's case where we had uh, total control because of Rona, not really because Rona, I just want to drink. 
it's not like Corn Coco's case where we had the whole file from the family and we're able to put up select documents, et cetera. Look, look, we're not, we're not being like money hungry and shit. And if it hadn't been for that uh, patron page on, on Courtney's case, we couldn't have stayed there. I and mean, we still lost our ass. We were originally, real life, real crime, Woody Overton personally, we were going to put up $10,000 reward for Courtney Coco. Guess what? I spent over 20 working the case. And if it hadn't been for y'all support through Patreon, I could have made it. Could have done it. On Barbara Blunt's case, a lot more fortunes close to home. And we had the help of the sheriff's office. But I am tomorrow, Cindy, or maybe at the latest on Monday, because we're having a big Friday tomorrow. At the latest on Monday, I had two videos that Toby Tomplay and I shot of uh, the residents and how rural it is and things that that you could see, but I'm not cheating the whole public or anything. My patron members, we already shot it. We're going to release it to you. Next question. Um, what is it? What is the most disturbing crime scene you have worked? Mm. I, I, there's one that pops to mind other than dealing with kids, y'all and, and baby murders and shit. Um, there was one I walked in, and this is going to be a series, and it's one of my best cases. That uh, um, eighty-two-year-old female, I think fifty-nine or sixty-something blows to the head, uh, looked like I mean you couldn't even recognize her head, and she's laying in a hallway. Um, blood was all the way down the hallway, so it means she lived for a long time after she's beaten down like that. But it wasn't the beating that killed her. They even, they broke bottles and shit on her head, and it wasn't the beating that killed her. They they ended up shooting her, uh, but not before they went with the wrong type of bullet and had to walk back through all the blood and go back. Meanwhile, the reason there was so much blood is they thought they killed her when they beat her to death. They, were, they went in the other room, continued to have sex, fuck, wow. They thought this 82-year-old lady was dead, and then they heard her gurgling later on, and so they went back, and they went to shoot her, wrong bullet, had to walk back through the blood, come back with the right bullet, and shot her in the head, and killed her. Most disturbing. That's one of the own stories in Jesus Held Me. Is it? Mm -hmm. uh, I forget um, what Jim is vocal. Okay. Jim, Jim is vocal about PTSD, and um, how do you handle? See, I've been thinking about that a lot lately because we get that question all the time. The um, I don't know. The the I, I handle it by blocking it out. I honestly do, and and, and uh, I don't think about it. Um, unless I pass by the place or something like that. So I, I guess I, I block a lot of shit out. What? The control. Oh, you know what? That's the Cindy just for my, you know, i tell you how I handle it. I guess the, the cases, y'all, I don't let them bother me if I can control them. Okay. Meaning that if I've solved the case, and I worked it to his conclusion. I know I got it right. Doesn't really drive me. You know what fucking drives Woody Overton? 9-11. Um, um, give me another one. Sin. Well, I mean, the, it was... Uh, Rona. The shit that I can't control. Katrina. Katrina mm. is the worst for you. You worked the first... Hurricane time. Katrina. You want, I have PTSD about Hurricane Katrina. She worked the first in 11 I worked the first confirmed death in the state of Louisiana for Hurricane Katrina at like 7-11 that morning. Uh, a tree fell on the trailer and, and squashed a guy who was smoking weed watching TV. But that's not, I don't, I had control over that. It was a shit show that came afterwards, right? Where all the refugees or evacuees, whatever the hell you want to call them, Memphis Parish Sheriff's Office had the, our SWAT team had the first boots on the ground in New Orleans for state police. Or, any, or their SWAT team, it was mine at the time. Uh, before anybody else had the boots on the ground, uh, when the levees broke, and but they had to be recalled back because of all the panic that happened in Paris. And and our sheriff Ard talked today about rumors. Rumors kill people. The Rona virus 
is real, fuck don't don't buy into the rumor mills, man. If it's not even the the fake news shit, I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody's putting anything out there on the news that's specifically fake. But the uh, rumors kill, man. The Hurricane Katrina, I have PTSD about. 9-11, I can't watch. I cannot watch uh, even a replay of the video. The movies made about it. Katrina, same thing. The, the, they did a documentary, the Levy's Brother. Fuck that. I ain't watching it. Um, those things I couldn't control. Uh, I guess I'm a control freak. I don't know. So the good question, thank you for asking it. All the homicides and stuff don't really mess with me and, and, um, uh, if I brought them to a conclusion. Okay. What is the worst excuse or the best excuse you've uh, had with dealing with someone like with a drug case? Like if you caught someone with drugs, what was? Jeez. The, uh, I don't really have an answer for that. I mean, like, the, I don't understand the question, I guess. The, uh, whatever. I knew they were lying. Nine times it was ten. the worst excuse you got when you busted someone for dope. Was the exact? I busted so many thousands of people. I made my career off of dope, y'all. But before I, I thought that's all I ever wanted to do until I worked my first homicide, and and then uh, so I have so many of those. I mean, I can't even quantify it. But I can tell you this: the I I, never, I haven't written a. Uh, a whole book of tickets in my entire police career, right? But I stopped more people than all the other cops you've ever met in your life combined. But I was looking for dope because I was working a dope game. And if you get out of me, I knew within the first 10 seconds of talking to you, whether you were high, your people style, et cetera, whether or not I was going to proceed. If, a, if if you're just somebody, some Joe Blow, and I didn't usually start working them hard until after nine o'clock at night and, uh, I'd stop by 3.30 in the morning because you got all the plant works. I didn't like to bother the working people, families, et cetera. But if I stopped you and I got you out and, I, and be like, hey, I'm a deputy overtime stopping you for a 32, 3 or 4 C, which is white light required in the license plate, which everybody's is out, right? So it's probable cause. It's the law. And be like, um, you know, how you doing, C, et cetera? Do you, do you have anything illegal in your vehicle? You know what I mean? Uh, drugs, guns, rocket launchers, tanks, anything like that, whatever. So I knew 15 seconds, you were done. You're straight, you're going down the road. But if you weren't, the favorite line of all the dopers was, you get this shit. I'm gonna say, do you have anything he leave in your vehicle? And I list all the things. And they'd always say, not that I know of. And I'm like, game on bitches. <laughs> your ass is going to jail. And I tell them, I say, uh, ask me. Do I have any illegal narcotics in my vehicle? And say, do you have any illegal narcotics in your vehicle? I'd be like, nope. It's not that you know of, okay? So then I would proceed to, well, you then not, they say, not that I know of. And I say, well, then you don't mind if I take a look in your vehicle? And if they hesitated or if they said, yes, I mind that you take a look, then I arrested them for whatever the violation was. I didn't write them a ticket. Actually, the Supreme Court has changed that law since I, I used to do that. Um, if they told me no, I couldn't search, then I arrested them for whatever bullshit thing it was instead of writing them a ticket. And then I called for a tow truck per office policy. Tow truck comes, guess what, people? I get to search your shit, not search. I get to inventory your vehicle uh, before it's towed, so I find the dope anyway. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Next, um, Rona. How did you get your uh, fracture? How did you fracture your skull? Mm. Blow to the head. <laughs> I you, got. I got to leave it at that. Have you ever killed anyone or shot anybody? I'm not answering the question. That that it, that uh, I'm not answering that question because I did anything wrong. I'm not answering that question just because I'm answer that question it's not a ptsd thing it's just uh i've never did anything that i didn't have to do okay and and and, and i never did anything like that that no matter how bad the person was or whatever that i don't feel bad for but uh, rona oh, that's the first time i've gotten that question it was knuckles and gumbo thank you knuckles
Um, let's see. <laughs> Lori Goolsby wants to know why we don't hear a little voice saying, language. <laughs> He's locked up in his room. <laughs> we locked the dogs up, Lori, and uh, Ms. Goolsby, the dogs and the rest of the kids we made them turn off the internet and shit, so who knows where they are. Uh, she's talking about my nine, almost 10 year old son, y'all. And the when, when imagine him living with me when he hears a curse word, he says language, and and uh, but it is what it is. So, if, if you weren't retired in law enforcement, what other dream job would you be doing? I would a couple things I want to do. Believe it or not, I want to be an archaeologist. Um, the and I wanted to. I'm a huge history buff, and more than anything, I like being in the water or underneath the water. And knowing what I know now, I'd like to be a dive master, and I probably will be one day. And I expect my son, our youngest son, will be one day. I'd like to own a fleet of diving boats and go out on the water every day. Did either of the two trailer parks in your early episodes and in well, the no. video tours? Blood and the 16 blood. Right. So patron members, you got to see, I'm not calling names and shit because I don't want to get another nasty letter for some dumbass fucking lawyer in the mail. But, uh, <laughs> but Toby and I shot some video of one of the famous trail parks that's mentioned in many of my stories. And that bitch was so clean. That's the first time I'd been past it in what? 15 years, 14 years. Look, it looked like, you know, I don't know. It looked like a golf course compared to what it used to look back in the day. All the we got some, we got some uh, video. Toby actually got video of the one that I fought the dude. We had to kick the door, go in. It was a domestic miles call. And when I was on the floor fighting the guy, et cetera, and I felt all the stuff crawling on me and I looked up and the walls looked like they were moving. That some bitch is still standing. One last out of all the, the ones that got washed away in the flood, that trailer still standing. Now, probably because the fucking roaches held together. Uh, so <laughs> even the moving water could move the roaches away. But yeah, the, the a lot cleaner, uh, not a, a quarter of the size that it was, but I mean, it is what it is. I think they were supposed to be shut down technically, but who the fuck's going to enforce that? But, John Wilkerson said right. language. JC? He said language. JT, sorry about your mama, buddy. Uh, Rona, y'all. John, that's John T. Wilkerson. Y'all heard in all my street episodes talking about shit ditches and you know, different things. John T was my boy. We went to the academy together. Both ended up coming to the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office. Didn't start here. Uh, great guy. No longer law enforcement also. He, um, just good people. And his wife was my work wife. Man, everything he had, I had. And she took care of me because I'm the most disorganized person in the world. But you go to the trunk of my unit, I had paper towels and files and reports and shit. Everything's on the computer now. But Heather's just come, okay. Well, um, Ruthie Cox. Hey, Ruthie. Thank she you. She says I met your son at the crew bash and bought him a pink cup. Bought a pink cup from him. But Heather. Awesome. <laughs> Heather's trying to. Um, she says, "What's your favorite ride at Universal Studios? And if you haven't been there, what's your favorite theme park ride?" The uh, geez, Heather. The, the Universal Studios. I went the. I like Universal. Goolsby's are gonna hate me for this. I like Universal better than uh, uh, Disney World, and it's been 30 years since I've been to either. And I actually lived in Orlando for a little while. Um, I, I like Universal Studios better because they sold beer. <laughs> and the only ride I remember riding was the damn Jaws ride, and I don't even think they have that anymore. So and that's not really a question for me. Jim Rafferty getting us a bitch. Well, I can't hear Jim, I had heard. He just you know. he just showed up. Okay. You want to ask one of the kids to bring Rona? Yeah, Yolanda's worried about your drink needing to be refilled. Mm. 
Yolanda, you're so great. You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do this real quick. I'll be right back. Ask a question. Sam. Well, how can I ask him a question? Answer a question. Okay. I get to be on. Shh. Okay, who wants a who has a question? <laughs> oh my gosh, Toby. Toby says, Jim, your voice sounded like a a wolverine purring on the last drop. Okay, so we went to go get moonshine. It's the craziest case you've worked in East Feliciana. I'll ask him when he gets back. Where's the Yeti, Mom? Which Yeti? Right here. Uh, thank you, like Yolanda. I just don't want y'all to look at a blank screen. Let's see. Hey, Ruthie. I miss you, Lori. I need my stage partner. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Karen. Mama Karen. Jim says, thanks for the love, everyone. Lauren says, hey. Karen says, hey. Let's see. I love you, Dawn. Don't tell Woody I'm here because when he comes in, I'm moving. All right, y'all. I'm back. The uh, cane break. Got a little bit of something here you don't know anything about. Blueberry moonshine. Yolanda, if you worried about me, just took it out of the freezer. You know it's fancy when it has a cork in it. Uh, Rona, everybody. What do I do with this? Nothing yet. It's all on today. So, again, thank y'all for joining us. Love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Jim Raffin and I do. Uh, continue to share Barbara Blunt, please. It's huge. We just dropped the latest episode for everybody tonight. Um, sharing equals tips. Tips equals solving the case. Jim Raffin has done a hell of a job going through the case file, finding things that were missed or overlooked. Uh, it's a shit hot case, no longer a cold case. The Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office is working it hard, and hats off to them, literally, Sheriff Ford. Thank you. Um, Heather wants to know what's your favorite 80s movie. Oh, geez, I don't know. Top Gun. And Dawn wants to know what is your favorite Woody and Cindy moment. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, son was conceived. Um, <laughs> JT said, "Man, did he marry up?" Because I kind of like got into place when yeah. you went out. Yeah, JT, I definitely married up. I got it right this time. Also, eleven years strong, so definitely got it right. Hey, you married up. You know, you married outside your class. You punted beyond your coverage, you bastard. So. Uh. <laughs> um, ask Woody about the Bigfoot he saw back in the day. Mm. I've seen Bigfoot, I've seen Panther and stuff like that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, Y'all, again, Barbara Blunt's case. Shit hot. Share it, share it, share it, share it, share it, people, and call on your tips. No matter how small you think they are or unimportant. Guess what? It's been 12 years. Barbara Blunt's body had to get moved from point A to point B. John T. Wilkerson and I, back in the day, working the dope cases we worked, et cetera, everybody, somebody knows they, whether they killed her there and then transported her or transported and then killed her. Somebody knows. And we know we, we have ideas that we're working on, et cetera. We, we need your tips. And don't forget about our Walker Live video from the Livingston Parish Literacy and Technology Center. Uh, it's a good show. Um, 
Aaron Williamson wants to know, was the nephew cleared that searched Barbara's house? Uh, Aaron, the everybody is the suspect except for me and Jim Rathman. Uh, the, the, but the, yes, I think so. The, um, the, but we're 12 years late to the game. And so the, uh, you always have to start. I start with two things on the homicide investigation, Jim and I did. Family or the people that were closest to the victim. And then you have to follow the money trail. Okay. And then that's being done. It's being done very, very well. And so everybody, uh, I mean, doesn't matter. The, at this point, I'm going to say, I'm just not gonna say more about it. The, the, but that that guy, no, I mean, you know, just leave it at that. It's an active homicide Rona. investigation, y'all. Oh, I'm sorry, Rona. It's an active homicide investigation. Good question. Thank you, Aaron, for being so active on our Facebook pages, et cetera. Um, Dawn Morrow says, Cindy, you look fine as hell. She is fine. And, uh, <laughs> I know Jody, I know Jody's proud of you too, Dawn. You're fine as hell too. <laughs> But you know that. So. Um, the what is blueberry shine? That sounds tasty. It's moonshine yeah. infused with blueberries and is delicious. Tastes like Kool Aid, but it has a hell of a lot of kick. So, hey, Tara Cone. Is- Dreama Smith says, "What do your kids think of the podcast, and do they listen?" They do, and uh, I think our oldest. Kate, Kate and Michelle, um, she surprised me at the basin, uh, and, and she wasn't supposed to be there. But, but the, the rest of them that are here, oh. Kaylee's gone. Uh, I mean, she's an adult, right? But she got to come to the basin and she and, and surprised me. And it was it was a big birthday surprise, et cetera. But there are kids. Hey, let me tell you something. This is a twenty four seven thing here. We wake up doing R O R C. We go to sleep doing RRC and our kids, I don't want to say suffer for it, but but they know uh, when mom and daddy are working and they know the hours that we put in every day, just like now. They're all on shutdown. They've got all their phones turned off. And if y'all uh, can't be watching the, the phones turned off but because we're hardwired now, but we made them turn all their shit off. So our kids are 100% behind us and uh, they're, proud. they're proud. They are. And, and I'm proud of them. All right. Do you know the Kiss Rona. Kill Mary game? What? No, no, I'm not trying to learn tonight. Okay, the next no. question. Jim, Cindy, and Toby, who are you going to kill, kiss, or marry? I'm going to kiss Shelly. No, Shelly's not part of the mix. You said Jim. Cindy or Toby. Oh, okay. Jim, Cindy, or Toby. You said, I thought you said Jim, Shelly, or Toby. All right. So. <laughs> Ask me again. <laughs> Jim, Cindy, or Toby, kill, kiss, or marry? <laughs> then I'm going to kill Cindy. Fuck you. I'm going to marry. I'm going to marry. Mary Shelley. Mary Toby and kiss Jim. Good luck. So my wife just left, y'all. So I'll read some questions. Um, Mary had some while it can go. Uh, she said, Mary says you're looking good with leopard print, Cindy. Well, leave Mary think so. And Tara kind of says you're a good woman. Toby Tom Play says hashtag Rona. Okay, Rona, Toby. <laughs> Y'all, uh, Tom Play tomorrow night, Point Marie, Facebook Live, tip jar, follow the instructions. I didn't get it the other day, but I think they've improved upon it. Dawn wants to know what's the craziest East Feliciana case you've ever worked. Uh, uh, Wesley, little kid that went missing, and and that's a bullshit case there. And, and I'll tell, I can't tell you exactly all my involvement, but the the boy, little boy, supposedly went missing, was abducted. Bullshit. I think he was sold. Um, we're going to do a series on that one day. The other one would be the nurse and. I'm horrible names. Uh, they brutally murdered her. John T., you know who I'm talking about. The Hoyts and then murdered her, uh, raped and murdered her. 
and, and that's a bad bad deal. You have to say a shout out to Hannah Gotro. Hannah Gotro, what's up? She is Sophie's great friend. She graduated with Sophie. You remember Hannah? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hannah, are you quarantined because of the coronavirus? <laughs> Sarah Wilson wants to know how is Woody watching Woody? Hey Sarah, I'm watching me on a laptop. I don't know how all this technical shit works. We're trying to work it out, y'all. Hey, you know what? We are we're just regular people, man. And we're regular people and we love, love, love y'all. And so we would like I cause of Rona. We're not sitting in some restaurant tonight, right? And and but uh a couple of weeks ago when we were, somebody posted the next day. We took some pictures with fans and stuff, and, and that I'll never get used to that. When somebody posted the next day, we're like, oh, we saw your table. We wanted to come up, but we didn't want to bother you. Guess what? You're not bothering me. Shit, we wouldn't have a show if it wasn't for y'all. We love our lifers. We love our fans. Never going to bother us, uh, and it is what it is. Hey, you know what? I'm the same dude you're seeing right now. I'm down to earth, and it is what it is. Um, Kim Gray, double, double fish, yay! Let's see. Hope you like. Uh, <laughs> hey Dawn, I, I guess you're right. Her husband is director of the Homeland deal for East Feliciana, and uh, Dawn is a recruiter for Louisiana National Guard. Uh, I venture to say she's the best looking recruiter. From that Louisiana National Guard, uh, lifelong friends of ours, and and they take care of me. I can just like John T. Wilkerson or most of my true friends. I, I'll go all year long and not call them. I'll call them one night when I'm hammered, and <laughs> I've actually had Don's husband come, uh, Jody, come get me out of a bar a couple times and take me where I need to be safely. Right, so we love our friends and we love our fans. But thank y'all for joining us. Sarah Wilson says, Woody, how long have you and Cindy been married? 11, we're on our 11th year. That's, that's like, she's like outlast anything I've ever had in my entire life by far. It, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot for Woody Overton. <laughs> it's a lot for somebody to put up with Woody Overton, I can promise you that. Hey, Beverly Mooney. Have you ever interviewed a suspect and had to hold back a laugh? Shit. Yeah. Too many to count. Too many to count. Uh, uh, you know, some people, you like, you interview them, it's like, I feel like I'm a mental giant compared to them. And, and for the mental karate, it's just, you know, whatever. Hey, old time storytelling, the interviews and stuff like that, y'all, we're going to do it. I'm going to get back to that. But um, Barbara Blunt's case, Courtney Coco's case, that's not entertainment for Woody Overs. That's about bringing some closure, if it can be closure. It's about getting answers for these families. Fuck, man, I don't care about anything else. I love telling a story. My wife dared, not dared me into it or whatever, but that's how Real Life Real Crime got started. But my goal, my dream is to have a national platform, a worldwide platform, where Jim and I can work cold cases. And, and look, we get two to three requests a day from across the world, people whose family members are hurting because their family, their, their family members have been murdered and it's never been answered. It could be a year to 35 years we've got. Those people are hurting, y'all. And if we can bring, I want, I want to help close those cases. I know Jim does also. I feel very strongly about that. Uh, but I, I do like to tell a story. We're, we're going to do a lot of that. So we're going to mix it up. It's not going to be like it was during Courtney Coco. But the thing about Courtney Coco, it was shit hot. The, uh, the seven and eight weeks we would drop straight in the road, that's because shit was breaking every day. There were times that we didn't think we were going to get put the episode out because shit was breaking so late on Thursday and Friday. This Barbara's case, a little bit different. Uh, Today's episode, you got the interview. Her son will be the last thing you hear about it, other than us promoting and asking y'all to share it until we get a break in the case. We're going to go back to old time storytelling. 
And I got a case that's going to make you shit your pants. The, the, it's a two-part, but you'll never know the two parts are tied together until I get done with the second one. Rona. Someone asked above if Barbara was seeing yeah, or dating. Was she what? Seeing anybody or dating anybody. Mm -hmm. And I get that question a lot, y'all. Uh, and, and it's a good idea, right? That not that we know of. And and Lifer's been sending in, and I get that her husband died tragically four years earlier, and 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 just a fucking horrific way. Uh, um, he was he drove a fuel truck, and it got hit crossing the train. It was a bad, bad explosion, and a lot of people got killed, et cetera. John T. wants to know if you ever told the story about the foot chase where we found ourselves and the suspect in the shit ditch. Yes, and if you listen to the podcast, you'd know that. <laughs> no, actually, it might be a patron episode, huh? The John T., I told, I've told that story. I didn't tell him about me letting the guy be underwater. <laughs> and you were like, uh, you better bring him up. And so I... I'll tell that one another day. But John Taylor told a lot of stories, Hoss, about you. And the, uh, but Shit Ditch is is one of the most famous ones. It might be just one patron. I, I have to go back and check JT. Uh, anyway, so lots of stories about your brother. I love you. Um, Rona. Do y'all choose which cold case you work? Courtney Co case. Coco's case was book only did it because Miss Stephanie had contacted me two years before about working it. And when Rapid Sheriff's Office heard Woody Overton was coming, there was no real life, real crime or anything at the time. But I'd done stuff when I was with the state police. They damn well knew who I was. They didn't want me working it. And they promised her the moon and everything. And they didn't. Deliver. So two years later, she called me back, and I was like, "I'll work it, but I'm only working on the podcast." And uh, so that's how we chose that one. Barbara Blunt has always stuck with me. It happened six months, almost to the day. Six months and one day uh, after I left Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office for Louisiana State Police as an investigator out of headquarters in Baton Rouge. Damn, I was hearing them. That's my boys. These are, these are the people I came up with working this case and they couldn't catch a break. It was fucking horrible. Everything was against them. And I was like, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I'm me being selfish. I was like, fuck, I'm glad I'm glad I'm not there because this is a bad deal. Uh, but you know what? No such thing as a perfect crime. Somebody knows who did it and your tips and sharing it will bring this case home, y'all. Share the episode. Just I'm not doing it for rating. Share the damn episode because every time you share it, I get a new tip. And just like in Courtney's case, the guys that did it, that murdered Courtney Coco, weren't even on anybody's radar. And But we kept doing it. Every time we do a little Facebook Live, or it was a minute or two, I'm in the field doing whatever, we get new tips. And we got, got them. And through lifers, crowdsourcing, it's a, it's a real deal now. It's a, it's a viable tool. And it started with like one tip of somebody felt something many, many years ago, 15 years ago, they felt this person wasn't acting right at that time. Then uh, Jim Rathman was able to put the whole puzzle together through the things I uh, tell them, whatever, whatever, put it together. And it's where it is today. And Rapids Parish, DA, Bill Terrell, shame on you for calling that family in in November and telling them that, yes, we had the right people. You're going to take it to the grand jury. Now, not shame on you if there's something, if you have to bring in a special pros prosecutor or something we don't know about, which is possible because of the dirty cops or whatever. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. And But you still should give Courtney's mama a fucking phone call and say, this is the holdup, okay? Rona, and other than us going to play in Rapids Parish, Woody Overton will never go through Rapids Parish again. Rona. I want to know if there's been any um, backlash from APD since the episode has been back up. Uh, if it is, they need a bowl of dicks because we haven't talked to them. 
and we're not taking calls from them or responses or anything else. I told Courtney's mama when she called back and said it's not happening. It did. I told her before it happened. I said the only reason I did that episode, I went out on a limb, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. They they're they're about to bury this case again. And I said I I stood up as a person. I said I don't give a shit if they try to arrest me or do whatever they got to do. Etc. I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna release the episode. I only release facts. I didn't tell you all the motives and everything, the whole big picture that goes into it. I just released the facts. APD calls freaking the fuck out because not because I did anything wrong, but because they damn well know that I got the information from inside the APD that was going on. Their ass was in a crack. And so, out of respect for Courtney's mom, I took it down. But I told her, I said you're going to be calling me back. And she finally did. I released it. And by that time we cut all ties with APD released it to uh, Texas Rangers and everybody else. So we could release it to you all the facts. Um, have you had any unsolved Rona. cases that you could not solve? Hmm. I've had two cases that are, I made arrests in both of them. I got confessions in both of them, but they nobody's in prison. We'll leave it at that, okay? So, no, no cases that, that are unsolved. I've got two that are unprosecutable, according to the district attorney. Um, and we're going to do episodes on them, I promise you that. And they're good cases. Can't find it now, but somebody said that there's rumor that Bayview has been, was it closed or whatever for human trafficking? It was closed for sex reasons and that they were having, they were fucking animals and everything else. The Bayview was closed. It, it was not the original owners of Bayview. They were great people. Not the one from Nelson's Hintz case of Trust No One, whatever. Some other people took it over after my time and they got arrested for a bunch of bullshit. I mean that uh we should probably do an episode on one or whatever but same kind of video stuff like denny and uh, cynthia perkins were doing with animals and shit um miss Steph uh yolanda wants to know how did miss stephanie find you through one of her lifers tammy i'm not gonna say her last name uh through her and uh, we were friends through facebook for many 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 years um She's a real sweetheart. She was at she was at the 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 bash for the basin, and she was ready for the party in Alexandria. She did a post today that she had bought an outfit for that, et cetera. And of course, it gets put on hold. Um, Rona. Oh, there was. A, what's your favorite song right now besides the theme song? Oh, Jesus, but I love I love all kinds of music except for classical because it makes me car sick even when I'm not in a car. Favorite song? I don't. I don't. I. I, Aaron, I don't have one. Aaron Goolsby wants to know how hot is shit hot. Yeah, uh, I don't know, Aaron. I I know that. I didn't get to tell you this, Cindy. I I called him earlier, and I went to look him up under contacts. He, he's number one. Not because he's on my favorite page, because they, I guess they a uh, so yeah. It's not going to be as shit hot as you know. Turkey season coming up, Hoss. I hope we can combine that with a little bit of fishing. Um, so, Sarah Wilson, Ruthie Cox, Beverly, Yolanda, everybody that's tuned in, thank y'all so much. It's getting a little long winded, I guess. Um, again, we want to remind y'all about Barbara Blunt. That's it, man. Listen to the episode. Y'all, please share it. We're going to break this case. And when we do, it'll be something really special. Uh, um, she didn't deserve it. She was brutally murdered. You got something? Brutally murdered. And the family needs to know what happened to her. What did I just, it's the same thing about, like our video, make a murder real again. All the people that have come to that live show and see it, when we actually made murder real again, people don't think about it. You're just sensitized to murder now. You're like, mm, fuck it. 
it's like you know, another story you're hearing or whatever because it's on the news every day. A lot of murders don't even get reported. And or make a murder real again, go watch that. And I'm not asking, I mean, if you have the means to buy it, go buy it and watch it, okay? If you watch that or Gemini's live on that, you will never take for granted the next murder that you see or you hear about somebody that was beat to death or choked to death or another body found in the field or whatever. You'll never look at it the same. And people have come to sensitize. Miss Barbara Blunt is 58 years old, dedicating her lives to her kids. Ricky, her son, said, Kid shit, he was he was like 32 years old, living on the property, and we're talking about his mama. And I said, Mama take care of me. It's like, yeah, you know, he said, you know, I didn't I, I said she cooked for you. He said, shit, I didn't own a pot or a pan. He lived on the property. He went over there for three squares a day, right? I mean, that's their mama. And 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 shit, man, if it was your mama, you'd be you you'd be like three cases, Jim and I got requested today. Three cases from across the nation. People that listen to Courtney or Barbara's case and know that we take it serious and we, we, we mean it. They want us to work this case. So guess what? Can't fucking afford to. I mean, I would love to go around the world and work and solve cold cases for people. We can't afford to. Shit, it costs a lot of money. And and uh, hopefully one day we'll have that option. But, you know. How bad, Kim Gray, how bad do I think the Rona virus is going to get. I think he just wanted to see me drink. But how bad do I think Rona virus is going to get? I think it's going to get shit bad. And I'm an eternal optimist. I'm going to tell you how, what I fear for the state of Louisiana and everybody in the world, but especially the state of Louisiana. I've been watching the stats. And the first day I watched it was like 20 something cases, no reported deaths. The next day it went to whatever. And, uh, no reported deaths. The next day it went to like a hundred and something and three reported deaths. The next day it went three hundred and something, six reported deaths, and today it was at six hundred and something, ten reported deaths. So that's but they hadn't fucking tested anybody. They only done a thousand something tests, and over fifty percent of that equals mur not murder but death. I mean, what the fuck? They they they, they run out of tests. They People you better wake up the you better wake up and this whole social distancing thing. Like I said, I'd much rather see the bad guys come running down the road with guns pointed at me than this Rona virus drink bitches. You got a question? All right, y'all. So we, I guess we'll wrap it up. Um, thank you for joining us. The. Uh, I appreciate and love each and every one of y'all. The thank you for supporting us. Uh, we try to get better every episode. You know, we try some things. You don't like it, we take it out. Commercials, shit, it's a fact of life. If you don't like the commercials, do the patron and uh, get a commercial free. And go ahead. Question: How do you feel about all the posts about the Corona making, like making fun of the Corona? <laughs> They're saying that because Corona is the drink word. Yeah. Uh, post personally, post about Corona, make them fun of Corona. I think everybody be. I think they'll think it's funny until somebody that they know dies from it. And it, look, it, it's not a good death, y'all. Not that anyone is, but these people are dying from respiratory illnesses, where literally they're choking to death. I'm about to get off. So you got anything else? I'm about to get off. So you got anything else? All right. I love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, thank you for having a drink with Woody Overton. Let me de-stress a little bit. Um, Seth, Barbara Blunt, share it. Courtney Coco, always just for Courtney. Um, love and appreciate each and every one of y'all. Jim Raffin and I do. These are hard times. Support your everybody that you can i guess locally uh toby tom play and then we'll be on it from uh, point marie tomorrow night um the hopefully we're gonna do some big show stuff for y'all in a couple weeks maybe three weeks that i have 
music, et cetera, like for a rural broadcast stage, et cetera. But stay tuned for that. We'll let y'all know this week. And, and um, but we love y'all. Thank you. Yeah, anything? Until next time or ever. Well, first of all, Woody Overton, your host of Real Life, Real Crime, the podcast. And from Jim and I, until next time or ever, I want us to catch you down on murder. Bye. Peace. So in this video now, you'll be able to choose if you want to save or to leave it. Yeah.